Today I'm gonna show you how I build my first smart LED strip controller with only like 5 euros or so. Stay tuned to find out how I did that. Hey guys and girls, my name is Dan from GeekChronicles.ro and today we're gonna talk about LED strips. LED strips are a very popular lighting solution for homes and businesses that check a lot of boxes in terms of functionality and also coolness factor. But there are a lot of types of LED strips and the most common one is the 4 pin 12 volt LED strip. This type of strip comes with different controllers. Most of the controllers come already with this strip if you buy a roll basically. It's a simple infrared LED strip controller that has a tiny remote from which you can change the color and also you have some effects available. But those strips have some limitations. I have two of these in my home. They are controlled via Zigbee module. From there I can choose the brightness, the color and I have like effects available. The kitchen, they're fine, they work fine, they do the job basically, but after I did some more research I came across this video and basically it presented me a whole new world in terms of LED strips. Yeah. So after a few nights of intensively searching on Google how I can build my own LED strip controller, I finally did it with some frustrations, some things that I had to throw in the trash because they were garbage. So Let's get into it. This LED strip controller is fairly simple. It has two capacitors, a Wemos D1 Mini, a USB Type-C plug, and a quick connect plug for the LED strip. That's basically it. Also, the schematic is fairly simple. A 5 volts of current enters to the USB Type-C port, then goes through the two capacitors, so they can smooth out the noise that may come from the power supply. Then the 5 volt in the ground goes to the D1, and also to the LED strip to power it. And from the D1 Mini, a data pin is connected to the LED strip in order to give the strip commands. That's about it. This is a very, very basic LED strip controller, but as my first attempt, to be honest, I'm really pleased with it. But also in the future, I'm gonna consider a few upgrades that I'm gonna mention later in this video. So stay tuned. When you are a beginner in soldering, it's a literal pain in the butt to solder. I had a really crappy soldering gun and it gave me nightmares, literally. So at my first attempt of building the board, I basically gave up after four or five hours of trying to solder three pins. Then I decided to abandon the project for a moment and go on AliExpress and order a new soldering iron. I got the PTS100 soldering iron. It's basically USB Type-C soldering iron and I'm gonna tell you right now, it worked like a charm. The strip has like almost two meters in length and 120 or so LEDs or pixels. And the software that I'm using on the D1 Mini is of course WLED. If you have experience with ESP Home and Tasmota, WLED is just as simple to install. You plug the Wemos into your computer, you go to the flashing page for WLED, flash the device, then connect to the IP address of the device and start all the configuration process that, that is super simple, in my opinion at least. From there you can define the LED strip model, there are a few available. My guess is that each strip has a different logic for controlling the individual LEDs. From there also you can define some software limits for the power delivery to the LED strip that I think it's a nice safety feature. But my strip is fairly short, so one amp of power at 5 volts is more than enough. So I didn't tinker too much with that power delivery side of things because I didn't find it necessary. What is also nice about WLED that you have a really nice documentation page. All the information that will get you started you can find there basically. And also you have there some schematics that help you build your first smart LED strip controller. But as I said in the beginning, this controller is not perfect. So what I'm planning to do next. First I'm gonna test it to see how it performs. And in the future, I'm planning to design a custom PCB where I'm planning to install also a fuse and a beefier capacitor and maybe switch to a different type of ESP board. An option that I'm considering is ESP01S that I think, in my opinion, is perfect for this type of application. But if you're planning to use a mic for uh, your WLED controller because it has some effects that uh, it responds to sound I guess it's called sound reactive or something like that. You need to use an ESP32 board because it has a little bit of more headroom in terms of performance that will make your effects run smoother. 
Also from what I've read online, if your strip is really long, there is also a possibility that the ESP8266 have some trouble running it from what I read. Also another goal that I'm planning next is to make the case a little more compact and also the board a little more compact because right now it's like really really huge, unnecessarily huge, but it is what it is, at least it works. <laughs> The integration in Home Assistant comes with an add-on and it's super simple to use that basically exposes all the entities for the your LZ strip in order to control it directly from Home Assistant which is cool So yeah, if you like the video, please like it or dislike it If you want to watch more videos with me, click the channel below Also some of the videos are in Romanian but I guess you can translate them Don't think that translations work that great but I know, you can try And until next time, keep on lighting those Lights?